perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now first on my side, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Is Jesus yours this morning? I trust he is because he is also our friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear.
a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. friend we have in Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Mm. Certainly do have a friend in Jesus and we can be thankful and give glory to God that we have Jesus as our friend. To God be the glory. Great things he has done and is doing and will do. is going to pray for us today and she's also going to uh, tell us a little bit about the World Day of Prayer and a couple of other days of prayer as well. Good morning everybody. It's lovely to see you all here and hi Nikki. Um, it's been advertised in the bulletin for the last few weeks as well as on the uh, board but World Day of Prayer is next Friday and um, the Goulston um, on Fagan Road, um, Arcadia, St Benedict's Catholic Church is putting it on this time and Pauline is in charge of that. And um, Brenda and myself are both taking part in it as well. But um, 
we're just wanting to let you know that everybody is welcome to attend. Just, um, you know, being there, listening, and this year it's on um, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland have all contributed to this. And, um, you know, it's just wonderful because we're all part of a fantastic Christian world. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, everything's in the bulletin here and um, it's also on the, the wall out there. So thank you for that. And also we're in the midst of, um, is it 30 or 31 days? 31 days of prayer as well. So that's on the... Um, yeah, Nick has been sending out emails to everyone where you can access it. And it's just so inspiring to know that so many people are all part of that. So, yes. Okay. And also the um, offering this week is for education and scholarship. And it's really important because there's so many people that really need to attend a Christian school and um, they can't do it financially. So our offerings will assist with that. And um, we never know who gets to know God through attending a Christian school or even talking to kids that go to a Christian school. So that's our offering. Okay, if we all bow in prayer and I'll just um, I'll pray for us. So if you want to kneel, feel free. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for being the Heavenly Father that we need. You are perfect, dear Lord. You are our creator. You are our saviour and you are our judge. And because you have created us and died for us and were risen again, then you are the only one who has the right to judge us because you judge us with such love. And thank you for being who you are, dear Lord. And I want to pray for the Australian Christian Lobby and for the wonderful work that they do. And I want to pray for Nikki today as um, she shares the words that you have given her, but also the Christian lobbies throughout the world. Be with them, dear Lord. And there's so much pain and suffering in Australia and right around the world. Some we know about because it's on the news. Others we just don't know about, dear Lord. And I pray that you'll be with all those that are suffering, especially in your name's sake, and that are innocent. And at this time, Russia and U Ukraine are having a tough time, Lord. Only you know the absolute truth. And I pray that your hand will be over everyone and the world's leaders. And, dear Lord, I pray that you'll be with the Adventist church leaders as well, that you'll guide them, that you'll give them your wisdom, that people will listen to you and um, not themselves or Satan talking to them. And I pray also that you'll be with the Greater Sydney Conference leaders, that you will also give them wisdom and understanding and be with each one that of uh, the Galston Church members, that we will reflect you and your love, dear Lord. And as we go about our daily work, that people will look at us and say, wow, I want what they have, and that they will learn about you also. I pray now, Lord, that you will uh, bless the offerings and that you will guide where they go and that you will shut us in today that all our cares and worries will be taken away from us as we listen to Nikki speak your words 
and that it will continue into the following weeks. Thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. The Sydney Adventist School Auburn was founded in 1917 and we have grown to over 170 students from prep to year 6. Located in the Cumberland area, we have seen demographic shifts as Auburn has been a migrating area. We're excited that the Education Scholarship will continue to provide families with an opportunity to benefit from an Adventist education. As a school, we are privileged to work together to bring the Adventist vision of nurturing today learning for tomorrow and having character for eternity in the way we teach our students, connect and support our families and continue to strengthen our relationship with our local churches. As a mission school, we continually give thanks to God for the opportunity to share his word with our families and we are committed to our role of nurturing each student's relationship with God and raising the spiritual temperature of our staff. Thank you for your generosity with our education offering and may God bless you, your families and your church. If you want to help, please give generously towards our local education offering. You can also contribute through e-giving, of course, knowing that every donation over $2 is tax deductible. If you're not in a position right now to be able to contribute, can I suggest that you simply share this video on social media and we can do more uh, to help others. Everybody gets a blessing from me, from the donor, the family and, of course, all of our schools. Change someone's life today by giving them an opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, I just wanted to get up for a couple of minutes after that video to share with you briefly because the school that we're giving to today in our offerings is Auburn, Sydney Adventist School, Auburn. And I work there um, half the week. I'm a chaplain there. And I just love the school. It is such a worthy school to give to. And Danielle, the lady you saw speaking, she's the principal. And she's just doing an excellent job there. She's a very spiritual woman. I've been really surprised at how much acknowledgement God has received, you know, in all of our meetings and conversations amongst staff. And the focus that she has on our school being a Christian school, not just, you know, educating for good education. We really value that. But also the gospel, Jesus, and the truth of the Bible is very important central part of this school's work and it's such a privilege to be working there myself and being able to take part in this ministry so i'd encourage you to give generously to this school i think the the offering today is heading towards helping to fund children who cannot attend and i know right now as we spoke in our church board a little while ago um, i was aware of a story just recently where one of the parents had to withdraw one of their students one of the three children because they couldn't afford to send all three of them to our school and they chose to send the one who was least academically performing um, to a public school uh, so that they couldn't continue at our school and we we're just so sad to hear that and if we were able to have a bit more funding we could help children like that get into school um, and stay inside of our little ministry there in Auburn so love to encourage you to give we're going to take up the offering now and um, yeah that's all from me <laughs>
encouraging them to be really Christian in their approach. So, Nikki, welcome to Galston, and we look forward to what you have to tell us today. Thank you. Morning, church. How are we all? I hope you're all well. Um, thank you so much for uh, having us here. And I do speak on behalf of the ACL team. Uh, I do work with a team. It's not just a one-person show, but just on behalf of everyone at ACL, we just want to extend our thanks and our gratitude for having us here, Pastor Chris and the leadership as well. Um, sorry, Pastor Nick. Um, I don't know who Pastor Chris is. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for your warm welcome. And I was just telling um, Richard as well as Pastor Nick at the beginning, you guys just have such an incredible land here, and it looks like it's blessed, and there's lots of room to grow, so praise God for that. And I'm sure that Golston and Jural will um, be blessed having you here. So if you, if you don't mind, I'll just pray before I start, and then we'll get on with the message this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time. God, we honor your presence. You said in your word that when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. And so we, we honor you. We honor you, King Jesus, in this place. We acknowledge that you are the greatest um, presence here, God. It's not about men, but it's about lifting up your name and your word. And so as we come before your message this morning, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us, that you would whisper in our hearts, God, these truths, that we would be changed, transformed, God, able to serve you out into this world. Lord, we ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen. All right, well, um, uh, so my name is Nikki, and so just a little bit of a background. I've been working with the Australian Christian Lobby now for just a little bit over a year. Before that, I was uh, serving in my church for quite a long time, being part of the same church now for about 22 years. Uh, <laughs> I've been there and I was working with predominantly with young people as well as just, you know, small groups as well. So before ACL, that's what I was doing and also finished my Bible college degree with Morling Theological College. So um, just a little bit of a background. Also, just love serving in mission work um, wherever I could in the islands um, and just doing that kind of work. And God called me to ACL. Uh, it wasn't ever part of my plan. Uh, I always wanted to go and serve missions overseas, but God um, brought Australia to my heart and, you know, just made these paths kind of uh, straight, which seems so crooked. And so really honored and privileged to be serving in this mission field called Australia, which is our home. Our text today is from Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version, and so if you do have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn with me to the chapter uh, of he uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, 1 to 3, and it reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great, my apologies, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which easily clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured this from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. What a telling um, command that, you know, is brought to us from the book of Hebrews. It tells us to run with endurance, to look to Jesus, and to consider him in all things, which is so important in the world that we're living today. It's not the same Australia um, from 10 years ago. It's very different to what we are living in and the things that we are fighting against never existed maybe even 15 years ago. But the context of these scriptures is that, you know, if you can notice, there's a lot of imagery of a contest or more of an athletic thing. I don't know if you guys are into sports or football, perhaps, um, or, you know, the races, 
but there's a lot of imagery of like the sports because in the ancient Greek times, that is what they were surrounded with. I'll just give you an example. In Ephesians 6.12, there was wrestling. You know, we, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And again, in 1 Corinthians 9.26, it talks about boxing. You know, you don't box in the air. You don't run without aim. And so there's a lot of that happening. And here in the book of Hebrews, we're set in a context where there is a competition a race that is set before each and every single one of us. There is a race that God has placed for me. There is a race that he has placed for you. Not the person next to you, but every single one of us. And we have this image now that there is a cloud of witnesses now looking to us as we run this race on earth while we are here. Uh, in Matthew 5... There is a, there's the Beatitudes, and the Lord proclaims five blessings of how to live, you know, when you live a Christian life. It says, blessed are, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall be, they shall see God. And then later down those verses, he says in five, Matthew 5, 10 to 11, blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then he says, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Beatitudes reveal the kingdom, the kingdom life for all that belong to Jesus. The word blessed in Greek meant happy, blessed to be envied. How can one be envied when you're being persecuted? But it says there that you are blessed. And so when we get hits in the Australian Christian lobby, and there are many, when we get those emails, God doesn't say, poor you, but he says, blessed are you, for you are persecuted for my name's sake. You know, um, and when we come back to Hebrews the survey of women and men of women in, in the Hebrews chapter 11 of who stood in history, in biblical history, there was Moses and Joseph and King David. There's a survey of men and women of God in history who stood the, the test of time, who endured the race and was faithful until the very end. And again, the stage is set for us. Not the people in the past, but every single one of us. And I believe truly in my heart that as, until the Lord calls us home and glorifies us back to heaven, that we still have work to do here. Until the Lord calls us home and we have breath in our lungs, then we have a purpose here. We have a calling that we need to fulfill on this world. Um, the instruction is to run with endurance. You know, it conveys the desire. That word endurance in Greek conveys this desire to get to that goal as quickly as possible. So there's no timidity. There is, a, there is sort of that initiative to go and run as fast as you can. We don't leave it for the person or we don't say we'll run fast tomorrow. We want to get to that goal as quickly as possible. So there is this uh, sort of urgency in, in us as Christians to run, to get there as fast as we can. You know, I love the fact that you're collecting offerings for Christian kids to go to Christian schools because they need to be protected. And so there is a mission field there to protect our children and so that they would have that chance to hear the gospel. And as people of faith, we are called to run that race with them, to encourage them, but also that we would give in order that they could be lifted high as well. Uh, endurance means the ability to endure an unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. As you know, life on earth is not perfect. It's actually quite difficult. And, but God says, run with endurance. Doesn't matter what is happening on the outside, God calls us to run in faithfulness. 
I was with some of the young adults in a program that we have for the Australian Christian Lobby, Christian Lobby called The Download, and I was encouraging them that God's called us to faithfulness, not just to do the right things, not just to do things when things are going well for us, but that we would be faithful in good and in bad seasons. Amen? Um, endurance is to remain, remain behind church, to stay, to wait. Some of us are in such a hurry, especially my generation. We forget the value of waiting on God. And we want to get to things so quickly that we forget that we need to discern God's will and to still be faithful no matter what happens. Sometimes we get so caught up in materialistic things in this world that we forget that our home is not here but in heaven. And so the endurance is such a challenging thing. I find that very difficult. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're faced with such bad bill one after the other, when you're facing some of these things that are so discouraging, when you know that the truth is so needed in the public square, God says, come on, keep on going, keep on running. And I, I sometimes I watch those people who run the race, and I think, wow, it's so incredible that they'll push past the pain. They'll push past everything else because they know they have a goal, and our goal is heaven. So how do we do this? How do we as Christians put into this broken world, how do we run with endurance? And Hebrews 11 identifies this for us very clearly. It says, number one, we have to look to Jesus. We must look to Jesus. Our gaze must be Christ, not this world, but Jesus. The founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Don't look at just the church. Don't look to your leadership, the government, or people. We are called to look to Jesus. Yes, we're called to honor our leaders. We are certainly called to obey the government as long as it doesn't defy God. But our gaze must be ultimately to Jesus. And the, the kind of imagery that is, you, is being used here is that when you look to Jesus, it means that you look away from everything else, that your focus is when it's just on him. That simply means that I'm going to look away from all other distractions, but my focus is Jesus. When it comes to running your race in endurance, that is one of the key things that you must do. Harold W. Attridge says this, the joy is rather like a prize or the goal, or the goal that, like the cont contest itself, lies in front of the athlete. The addresses are called to follow Christ's footsteps with the assurance that their race is not in vain. Your race that you are running for God is not in vain. And to me, that is so reassuring. To me, that is so encouraging as I consider the things that because God says, when you look to me, you follow me, you consider me, your race is not in vain, no matter how it feels like. The second thing that we need to know is, uh, as we run this race with endurance, Hebrews 12, 3 says this, consider him who endured from sincere from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. We can get very weary at times and faint-hearted. I have to admit that in this line of work, there are many times that I have grown, gone weary and faint-hearted. And I probably speak for the rest of my team. But the, the Bible is very clear, and it says, consider him. Because he has gone ahead of us. He has made the example. It, consider him because he endured such hostility. If he can, you know, go on that cross and bear the weight of sin and be mocked and be crowned with a, a crown of thorns, then we must look to him and consider what he has done for us so that we will not grow weary or faint-hearted. To, to consider is to think carefully about 
especially in order to make a decision, contemplate, or reflect on. The race, as I said, is a lifetime event. It's not a one occasion thing. It's not just on a Sabbath day. It's not just on a Monday to Friday or for other Christians on Sundays, but it is a lifetime event. The race that the Hebrew is the Hebrews is talking about is never at line for us. I wish sometimes church that You know, when we open our Bibles, there's a manual, steps 1 through to 10, how to live your life in 2022. But it doesn't do that, does it? Doesn't give us uh, specific instructions. But the Bible continuously talks about what we should be doing. Just some examples for you in Matthew 5, 13 to 15. And this is one of our core missions at ACL is to be salt and light. So as we run the race, God has called us to be salt and to be light in Australia. In Micah 6, 8, it says to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly before God. It says there in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, to give thanks and to pray always. This is all part of our race while we're here on earth. And of course, Hebrews 10.38, to live by faith and not by sight. We are called to forgive in Colossians 3.13, to forgive those that have sinned against us. When I look at through this list, and you know, there's so many more that we can cover, we think there is a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people to reach. There's a lot of forgiving that needs to be are happening in our lives. There's a lot of prayer that we need to be saying, especially for our country and indeed the world. I love that as a church, we can come and bring before God these things that are so out of our reach because God calls us to prayer. For the prayer of the righteous avails much. It's not for the faint-hearted, is it, the Christian life? You will need every ounce of grace that is poured out from God to survive. And when it gets tough, and it will, and it probably has already for you, it says to consider him, consider Christ, to look to Jesus, and to run with endurance. Just a quick kind of overall of what's happening right across the nation and what we're dealing with at the ACL The reality of this nation is that in Victoria, the change in suppression bill has passed, which literally means that just because you want to pray for someone, you are potentially, you know, you could go to jail or be fined to 100,000, be fined up to $100,000. The voluntary assisted dying bill has been approved in all states except for New South Wales. People are taking their lives because they found no hope and there's, they haven't heard this good word. We are currently fighting this in the upper house and we are doing all that we can in ACL so that we could save lives. And so I do ask that you would pray about that in your own time, that God would stop this kind of bill being passed in New South Wales. They are looking to decriminalize drugs in Victoria and in the ACT. All drugs, not just one, but all. The parental rights bill here in New South Wales is what we're fighting for, and we're partnered with some of the uh, politicians there, especially with Mark Latham. And it's to give the rights back to the parents to have primacy in ways where they can teach children about the truth in gender ideology. That gender is created um, by God, and it is found in male and female. The reality is this is that darkness is slowly creeping into our world. But God calls us to be salt and light. He calls you, church, not just ACL, but every single one of us, that we would be that salt and light into the community of Goldstone, that we would shine our lights here and proclaim to the world that there is a better way. There is a way that leads to life, not only life on earth, but life for eternity. And our hearts and our goal is to up, you know, uplift the word of God in the public squares. 
that although we're reviled or though we're mocked or perhaps sometimes persecuted in a small manner, we are still trying to be faithful because we're trying to point people back to Jesus, who is truly the answer to all of our fears, is he not? He is the answer, and he is the only one that can provide true hope. It's not the government. It's not any person, but it is found in the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who actually gave his life in order to prove that he loves every single one of us. John 3.16 clearly says, For God so loved the world that he gave. And that responsibility also lies with us, church, that because of love, that we would give ourselves to the work of Christ, that we would run with endurance as we look to Christ, that we would consider him. Christ becomes the inspirer of our faith. When they, when we become weary on the way or grow faint at heart because there seems to be no end when the, to the trials we have to endure, let us consider him. He suffered uncomplainingly the hostility and the malevolence of a sinful people. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. What a reassuring thing is that everything that we do for Christ, it's never in vain. We're always taught in my, um, as I grew up, we're always doing things for God for the audience of one. It's, you know, sometimes you can get all the glory and, and then be distracted by that. But our goal is to do things for the audience of one, to please him at everything that we do. That when you give to the Christian school or when you go out there and be a chaplain or you're there teaching your grandkids or being a mother, teaching your, the next generation about the things and the truth about Christ, when you raise up your voice and and, and, you know, um, identify that life is sacred. These things are not in vain. These things all glorify the name of Jesus. These things all make us point towards the heaven and, and reminds the world that there is a God who loves them. Our greatest privilege that we have church, not only here at ACL, but is that we are witnesses in this world of the truth of Christ. Our greatest privilege and the answer really lies with the church, doesn't it? It's not with an organization. It's with the church. That's you and I. We are partners. We are a body of Christ. And together, if we function in unity, then I think that we could really make an impact in this generation. The prayer of my life is to Timothy 4.7 is that when God calls me home, that I would say these words like Paul said to Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. It's not an easy walk, but it is one that is worth it. In Revelations, a title that's given to Jesus is this, worthy, worthy, worthy are you, O oh Lord. And he is worthy. He's worthy of our lives. He's worthy of our service. He's worthy of our trust and our sacrifice. He is worthy of everything that we can give him because he gave it all for us. I pray that you would be encouraged today, that together you would know that in your hands, your hands, which is the Bible, this is the answer that Australia is looking for. This is the answer that our young people who are so angry sometimes because of what's being fed to them, we have the answer. And we are called to speak in gentleness, in kindness, to pray that God would change things around. I just have a quick story to share with you. You know, when we were at the hearing for the parental rights bill uh, back in... I believe it was March last year, 
either March or April. I remember that as we started the, you know, the hearing, there was 20 young adults who were so against this parental rights bill, and they were chanting against us. And they really disrupted the hearing for about 20 minutes. Uh, they were so angry, saying that we hated um, you know, their community, we hated the transgender community. But no, we were there representing because God tells us and commands us in the Bible that as parents, we have a responsibility to pass on the truth to the next generation. That as parents, we can't let the state teach our children because they don't belong to them. God has entrusted them to us. And so these you know, young adults were so angry. And you could have two reactions to people that hate you. And one is to hate them back and maybe throw something at them. I don't encourage it. And the second is to love them, to see past their hate, to see their need of the truth, to see that they are lacking love. And I pray that those young people would come to Christ, especially that leader that they had. I work with young adults all the time, and they can get quite emotional, I must say. But at the end of the day, they need God. And I look at you this morning, and I know that God would have done great things in your life that you would have stories that could be shared to the next generation to encourage them to move forward. We look to you as our leaders because you have gone ahead. This generation needs your wisdom. And I pray that for those that are logging in online and those that are here present, that you would run with that endurance, knowing that God is still working in your life powerfully more than you could ever, ever imagine. So thank you so much for having us here. And um, I just pray that this would encourage you today. Allow me to pray just as I end um, my talk this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for uh, your reminder in Hebrews that calls us, God, to run our race with endurance. And I pray that as we meditate on these things that have been shared this morning, that these truths would echo in our hearts, that we would run, Father God, with endurance, considering you, and that we would always look to Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that even if there is much darkness in our nation and indeed around the world, we thank you that you are still sovereign and very much in control. And so we submit our lives to you, God. We pray that you would use us for your glory, that we too could say that we have run our race. We have fought the good fight, and we have stayed faithful until the end. We ask all these things in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Nikki, for blessing us today. Um, it's great to know that you are committed to raising God's standard amongst young people uh, with the organisation of ACL we're just grateful for what uh, what you and uh, Martin Niles and his team around Australia are doing uh, for Christians in the world or in Australia Um, all I can say is the Holy Spirit works because if I knew what Nikki was talking about today I don't think I could have chosen a better hymn it's written by Fanny Crosby who also wrote two of the previous hymns that we sang and Nikki has encouraged us today Stand like the brave. Let's sing.
questions for Nikki she's going to be around for a while so uh, she'll uh, be happy to talk to you <laughs> 